you are going to master the five crucial steps to hitting an advanced level forehand. These are the five steps that every top player in the game uses on every single forehand. And by you mastering these five steps, it's gonna allow you to crush your forehand with that effortless power and control. So if you've ever wanted to feel really confident and certain that you are doing everything right on your forehands, then you're gonna absolutely love this video because we're gonna break it down into those five crucial steps we see on every single ball of the split step, the unit turn, the backswing, the acceleration, and lastly, the contact and finish. By mastering these five steps, it's gonna transform your forehand into one with a lot of confidence, ugh, consistency, and topspin. And ultimately, we're gonna break down each of these steps and provide you with specific feedback and drills you can use to make sure you're doing it every single time. So let's jump right in to the split step. The first step that you need to master to start hitting those consistent advanced level forehands is the split step. The split step is executed by every single top player in the game on every single shot. And it's also very critical that you do it on your forehand. The reason why you want to split step is split stepping, number one, allows you to react to your opponent faster. And number two, it actually increases the amount of speed and quickness that you can generate from the ground. This is because when you land your split step, it actually stores up a little bit of elastic energy in your tendons and muscle fibers, which allow you to quickly adjust and move into position. So how exactly should you split step to really tap into all this maximum speed and agility? When you split step, you want to look for three primary checkpoints. Checkpoint number one, as you land your split step, you want to make sure it's a wide split step by having your feet at least your shoulder width or more apart. The second checkpoint is you want to split on the balls of your feet. By splitting on the balls of your feet, it allows you to tap into your calf muscles and gives you more balance. The third and final checkpoint you want to look for to literally get that maximum speed is to make sure that you're maintaining this inward curvature of the lumbar region of the spine. This is uh, uh, contrary to having a flatter back when you split, which by not having this arch in the spine, it makes it so you can't use your posterior chain, like your glutes and your hamstrings to support your back and give you that speed. It will also prevent any injury. So now that you know the exact three checkpoints to implement when you split, now we're gonna talk about that optimal unit turn. All right, world-class athlete, you've now landed that perfect split and you've adhered to the three checkpoints to maximize your reaction and the muscles that you're using. Let's jump right into the unit turn. Now, when you execute your unit turn, you're gonna wanna look for a few key checkpoints as well as understand why you should be implementing your unit turn. The reason why you wanna perform your unit turn on every single forehand is it allows you to accomplish two huge benefits. Number one, it makes sure that you're getting your torso rotated on your forehand. And basically what this does is it allows you to generate more effortless power from the bigger muscles of your body rotating in your forehand. The second benefit of completing the optimal unit turn is it's gonna allow you to keep your hitting arm very relaxed and effortless going in to the backswing. A really key checkpoint that you wanna make sure that you're implementing is to execute your unit turn literally the exact second after you've done your split step and you've identified that that ball is coming to the forehand side. So now that you know exactly how to execute your unit turn, let's jump into the optimal backswing. All right, world-class athlete, you've mastered the split, you've mastered the unit turn, now we're gonna cover the backswing. This is where a lot of players make some common mistakes and you're gonna know exactly how it should feel and what you should be looking for to get the maximum fluidity, achieve the correct checkpoints, and be able to rip your forehand with that effortless pop and that consistency while feeling confident in your shot. So, after you've executed your split, you've executed your unit turn, the common mistake that most players make on their backswing is they take their racket back either with just their hand or they take their racket back too far. The key that every single top player in the world will do to execute that pro backswing is you wanna make sure that you place your racket no further back than around 5.30. If here was a clock, 
here would be 12, 6, and 3. When you execute your backswing, you want to have a short backswing at around 530. And instead of taking your racket back with your arm, you want to just set your racket down with fluidity down into that backswing position. By achieving this checkpoint, it's going to allow you to tap into the optimal muscles and create the biomechanical principles to generate the maximum amount of racket head speed and forward force going into contact. So now that you know exactly how to execute that pro level backswing, let's close with the acceleration, contact, and follow through. All right, world class athlete, you've now executed all of the optimal steps to get to the most satisfying phase of the shot, which is going to be the acceleration, contact, and follow through. The key lesson that you really want to implement when you step out on the court is to accelerate and generate power, not by tightening or tensing your arm, but to generate power from the bigger muscles of your body, like your legs, your core, and of the muscles of the hitting arm structure, you want to accelerate from the pec and the shoulder. All together, your, your acceleration should look something like this, where you drive your legs, you rotate your hips, and you pull your arm forward all the way through into that optimal contact and follow through. My mistake when I first started playing tennis, I was actually a, a really highly ranked ping pong player, and I jumped into tennis using the same technique as ping pong. So my arm was really tense, it felt really tight, and it felt like the more that I tried to hit the ball harder, the less consistent that I got, and it ultimately just felt awful. And if I had learned this from the very beginning on my tennis journey, it would have completely transformed my experience and really allowed me to expand my skill set and confidence on the court so much faster. So really make sure you implement this as well as all the other key checkpoints of when you execute your backswing, accelerate with a relaxed arm, swinging from the bigger muscles of your body and getting to that optimal contact point. So where exactly should you make contact? What's the key checkpoint? And how should it feel when you follow through to know that you're doing everything perfectly? As you accelerate using the bigger muscles of your body, you wanna make contact with your wrist in a very relaxed position and also where your wrist is in an extended position. A super ultra common mistake, especially for beginners, is when they make contact, they'll try to generate power by flexing their wrist in which not only feels awful, but it's gonna create a lot of inconsistency because the racket face is creating a large angle like that right before contact. What you'll see with virtually every single top player in the game is that they'll be generating the power from the bigger muscles of their body, keeping the wrist in a relaxed state, driving it forward with the wrist staying relaxed and extended all the way into contact where a great contact checkpoint you wanna look for is where your upper arm joint segments are pointed either perpendicular to the net or at about approximately a 45 degree angle towards that net post. By positioning your arm more in front at contact, it's gonna allow you to accomplish two things. Number one, you're actually gonna get a greater level of surface area to be able to generate topspin. And number two, it's gonna allow you to tap into the biggest muscles of your body to get that nice effortless feeling at contact. So after you've achieved that optimal contact point, a great follow through checkpoint that you wanna implement to literally get pro results the very next time you step on the court is emphasize the forward extension of the shot. Instead of trying to generate spin by tensing and swinging upwards, focus on just staying very relaxed, swinging, making contact, and hitting that arm all the way through. Uh, a drill that you can use is when you finish and make contact, follow through by catching your racket with a straight arm in front of your body. It's gonna allow you to tap into such effortless power and truly feel sensational. So athletes, you've learned a lot in this video. And the next time you step on the court, you're now gonna have those five crucial steps to look for to make sure that you're doing everything at literally a world-class level. I hope you've sincerely enjoyed this video, whether you're a beginner or you're an advanced player. I had a great time shooting it for you. And as we uh, close this video, always remember that it's not gonna work right away. You're gonna struggle, you're gonna fail, but the most important thing is that you decide 
to commit to being your absolute best self on the court, that you decide to commit to doing the technique with the best capabilities that you have. And over a long enough period of time, if you retain that consistency, that persistence, and that enthusiasm, you will rise up and you will develop into literally, if you decide, a world-class player. So I hope you absolutely love this video. If you wanna learn more advanced instruction, go ahead and click the link in the description and go over to my website. As always, I had a great time shooting this for you and I'll see you on the next video.